Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, and welcome to our worldwide audience for today's coverage of the return to Earth of three of the crew members of the International Space Station. You are looking live inside the ISS Flight Control Room, Ficker 1 as it is called here at the Johnson Space Center, where a shift handover between the Orbit 2 and Orbit 3 teams is underway. The Orbit 3 team uh, to uh, preside over the activities of the crew on the International Space station during today's uh, return to Earth activities for half of the six-person crew that has been together for the past 17 days. We'll talk more about the personnel on console a short time from now. Half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow in the town of Korolyov, uh, the International Space Station Flight Control Room. You're looking at a live view from a balcony camera overlooking that room where Russian flight controllers who will be presiding over the undocking and landing of the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft on the steppe of Kazakhstan later this evening, U.S. time. Uh, those flight controllers are monitoring all of the systems of the Russian segment of the International Space Station and uh, the vehicle in question, which is the Soyuz MS-09 that will bring back to Earth later tonight. You're looking at that uh, vehicle right in the middle of your picture. It is docked on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, the Rosviet module, to which it arrived back on June 8th. The International Space Station currently is flying 252 statute miles over the South Atlantic, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Returning to Earth later today, Three crew members, a multinational crew, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev, who is the Soyuz commander for this evening's landing, flanked uh, on his left by the offgoing station commander, Alexander Gerst, who served as the Expedition 57 commander, and to his right by NASA flight engineer Serena Onan chancellor who are wrapping up 197 days in space, 195 days on board the International Space Station. Once they depart, with undocking uh, scheduled uh, just under four hours from now, Expedition 57 will automatically transition to Expedition 58. And that uh, trio of uh, crew members who will be on board as a three-person crew for a little bit less than three months, Anne McLean, the NASA flight engineer, Alec Kononenko, the new station commander for Expedition 58, and he will also be the commander for Expedition 59 come the spring, uh, joined by Canadian Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques. That trio uh, launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan back on December 3rd to begin their own six-and-a-half-month mission. That trio is uh, going to be joined uh, at the end of February, uh, February 28th, U.S. time, March 1st in Baikonur, by three new crew members who will join them. That will be Nick Haig, NASA flight engineer, Alexei Ovchinin, uh, who will be the Soyuz commander for Soyuz MS-12, and NASA flight engineer, Christina Cook. Uh, if you recall, it was Haig and Ovchinin who uh, experienced the launch abort back on October 11th. They have been reassigned to fly uh, this spring as part of Expedition 59 and 60, and they will be joined, uh, of course, by NASA flight engineer Christina Cook to bring the station back to its steady state uh, complement of a half dozen crew members. Getting back to, uh, to the uh, crew that is in the process of uh, preparing for uh, their farewells and hatch closure uh, in the uh, International Space Station. Sergei Prokopiev, Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency and NASA flight engineer Serena Onan Chancellor. Again, they launched a in uh, the Soyuz MS-09 vehicle that you see in the middle of your screen back on June 6th. It was a two-day rendezvous back uh, in June. They docked to the International Space Station's Rosviet module on June the 8th. So they are wrapping up 197 days in space, 195 days on board the International Space Station. By the time they uh, complete their journey several hours from now with landing scheduled just over seven hours from now, uh, they will have completed 3,152 orbits of the Earth, a journey of 83.3 million statute miles. For Sergei Prokopiev, uh, on this, his first flight into space, expeditions 56 and 57 will have totaled 197 days in space for him, as it will for Serena Onan-Chancellor, completing her first mission into space. 
Alexander Gerst is the veteran. He is uh, board engineer number one in the left seat of the descent module for tonight's landing activities. His 197 days in space over these two increments uh, will have uh, totaled 362 days in space on his two flights, more than any other European Space Agency astronaut, eclipsing Tomas Reiter's mark of 350 days in space set several years ago. This trio uh, saw the arrival of seven visiting vehicles during their six and a half months aboard uh, the International Space Station and saw the departure of five visiting vehicles. Prokopiev conducted two spacewalks during his time on orbit, totaling 15 hours and 31 minutes, the second of which was conducted last week and was indeed memorable, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. The Soyuz vehicle uh, that is returning home uh, for a landing later tonight on the steppe of Kazakhstan, which will be Thursday morning uh, at the landing site itself, is comprised of three sections. The top portion is called the habitation module, that has, or the orbital module, as it is sometimes known. You see in this exploded view, uh, that has been the focus of attention since late August when uh, a sudden decrease in pressure in the International Space Station was noted, quickly traced to a leak uh, in through a hole in the habitation module that was detected by Prokopiev and Alex Gerst. They used an epoxy sealant uh, to quickly uh, remedy the situation and close that hole off. Uh, pressure has since held steady with no uh, further issues associated uh, with that leak. Last week, Prokopiev ventured outside of the International Space Station with Oleg Kononenko, the new station commander, conducting a seven-hour, 45-minute spacewalk in which uh, Kononenko used a variety of cutting implements uh, to cut away a portion of thermal insulation on the habitation module. Associated, you see the uh, video here, uh, as an example of what was done as he uh, and Prokopiev cut away a piece of thermal insulation to expose uh, the... Uh, outer hull of the habitation module, a correspondent to the area inside in which uh, the leak was detected back in August. They collected uh, video and uh, photo documentation of that area and collected a sample of the epoxy sealant that had extruded uh, through the hole during the repair work that was conducted inside. Uh, that will be returned to Earth for Russian engineers to analyze and uh, for them uh, to get a better handle on uh, any improvements that may be in the offing in the future for such repair techniques that may be required. That habitation module uh, that we mentioned uh, a moment ago and uh, talked about extensively last week during our spacewalk coverage, that habitation module, uh, the hatch will be uh, sealed uh, between uh, that portion, the upper portion of the Soyuz vehicle, and the middle portion called the descent module, where the three crew members will be strapped into in their respective seats. Again, Alex Gerst will be in the left seat as board engineer number one, Prokopiev in the center seat as the Soyuz commander, and Serena Onan Chancellor will be in the right seat as board engineer number two. Once uh, the deorbit burn, uh, the braking maneuver to enable the Soyuz to drop out of orbit is completed about 10 seconds after the completion of that deorbit burn, which will last four minutes, 36 seconds in duration tonight. That habitation module will be depressurized, and it, uh, like the lower section, the instrumentation and propulsion module, will be discarded uh, on pyrotechnic separation of the three module uh, sections about a half an hour after the deorbit burn. Only the descent module comes home. Alex, you are go to perform the system status check for step 2.4.8 on page 24. Copy, 2.4.8. The uh, homecoming for Prokopiev, Gerst, and Onan Chancellor will begin uh, with the undocking of the uh, Soyuz vehicle from the Rosviet module. The undocking uh, to occur after about a 90-second opening of the hooks 
Springs on both sides of the interface will push off against one another to enable physical separation of the vehicle at 7.40 p.m. Central Time this evening. There will be a, a period of about two orbits uh, for the Soyuz to separate to a safe distance away from the station for that deorbit burn that will last four minutes and 36 seconds in duration. The deorbit burn to occur at 10.10 and 52 seconds p.m. Central Time tonight. About uh, 28 minutes later, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz will take place. And again, the focus of attention is only on that center section, the descent module, that will be traveling in the direction of uh, the heat uh, repulsion uh, that will be ablated through a heat shield at the bottom of the spacecraft. Uh, that heat shield will be jettisoned a short time after uh, uh, the vehicle reaches the lower uh, regions of the atmosphere where the command uh, will be sent to open up first a drogue chute and then a main parachute. The vehicle then, uh, about 15 minutes after chute deploy, will settle down uh, to a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just a second or two after the braking rockets, as they are called, on the bottom of the Soyuz vehicle fire just an instant before touchdown in a final buffering maneuver for the crew on board. And they uh, will be back on Earth at that point. The landing currently is scheduled yes, we do understand that. at 11.03 and 21 seconds p.m. Central Time, 12.03 and 21 seconds a.m. Eastern Time on the 20th, tomorrow. And that will correspond to 11.03 and 21 seconds a.m. Kazakhstan Time on December 20th. The landing site coordinates currently are scheduled to be 47.20 degrees north latitude, 69.35 degrees east longitude, about 87 miles southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan, where the uh, Russian search and recovery forces, along with NASA and European Space Agency personnel, uh, have been uh, housed uh, since very early this morning when they flew from the staging city of Karaganda to the uh, northeast east of Jezkazgan and in Russian Antonov 26 uh, aircraft. They arrived in Jezkazgan uh, where they have spent uh, the night to their time during the day uh, U.S. time uh, before they are scheduled to make their way to the Jezkazgan airport a few hours from now uh, to begin boarding helicopters that will take them in sequential fashion down to the landing zone. Again, that landing zone about 87 miles to the south uh, east of the town of Jezkazgan. The uh, weather forecast uh, for landing is not as perfect as it was back in October that greeted uh, Drew Feustel, uh, Ricky Arnold, and uh, Oleg Artemia following uh, their uh, homecoming back to Earth. It is uh, the dead of winter, of course, uh, in, uh, in Kazakhstan. The temperature at landing time is expected to be about 11 degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill factor of about minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're expecting scattered clouds, a low deck of clouds uh, to greet uh, the Soyuz and its three occupants upon landing. The search and recovery uh, forces will be airborne in a series of a dozen Russian Mi-8 military helicopters, eight of which will go to the prime landing site, two of which uh, will be uh, uh, positioned at the ballistic landing site far to the southwest uh, of the nominal landing site, and two will be positioned in the middle, ready to go either to the nominal landing site for support or the ballistic landing site to the south if required. Those uh, helicopters uh, with NASA, European Space Agency, and Russian personnel, uh, along with flight surgeons and uh, Russian nurses uh, in tow, uh, will be circling uh, the area uh, of the landing site, waiting uh, to spot the Soyuz under its chutes. Once the Soyuz touches down, then the helicopters will land in a rapid uh, sequential fashion to begin the process of getting to the capsule to extract the crew, placing them in chairs uh, for a few minutes of uh, adaptation back to Earth's gravity before they're placed in, in a medical tent to get out of their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing. They ultimately will be uh, placed back in helicopters uh, to be flown back to Jezkazgan where uh, the crew will split up with Prokopiev uh, making his way on a, on a uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft back to Star City, Russia. On and Chancellor and Gerst will be uh, flown first to Bodo, Norway, uh, 
together in a NASA Gulfstream jet. They will split up in Bodo. Gerst will then uh, be flown on a European Space Agency aircraft from Bodo to Cologne, Germany. On and Chancellor will continue on back to her home here in Houston. Switching to standalone power. At this hour, uh, Sergei Prokopiev has been inside the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft, okay. activating its systems and placing uh, the Soyuz on autonomous power. We're about 20 minutes away from the point at which uh, the crews, uh, the two crews, the two three-person crews, will uh, have an opportunity to say farewell to one another as uh, Gerst, Prokopiev, and Anand Chancellor then make their way through the hatchway uh, on between the Rosviet module and the Soyuz vehicle uh, to begin uh, to close the hatches, conduct leak checks uh, to make sure we have an airtight seal at the docking interface between the Soyuz and the Rosviet module. They then will suit up in their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits, make their way into their respective seats and prepare for undocking that is scheduled just over three and a half hours from now. Uh, yes, uh, Soyuz uh, has been reactivated. We have completed all the steps starting from page 19 and all the way through uh, page number 24. All the steps have been executed in full. 2.4.9, uh, uh, work light removal. Should we execute this step? It was about uh, 24 hours ago when uh, the six crew members gathered in the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station for the traditional change of command ceremony. Alex uh, Gerst uh, from the European Space Agency, who has served as a Soyuz commander since Oct uh, as station commander since October, uh, handed over the reins of command of the International Space Station to Oleg Kononenko, uh, the Russian uh, veteran Russian cosmonaut who's now on his fourth flight into space. Kononenko uh, is now the Expedition 58 commander. Also, will serve as the Expedition 59 commander. Uh, that uh, will continue until the June time frame, when he will hand over command to. Uh, Alexei Ovchinin, uh, who is going to uh, launch along with Nick Haig and Christina Cook on March 1st, Baikonur time, February 28th, uh, U.S. time. Let's take a look uh, back 24 hours at the change of command ceremony that saw Alexander Gerst hand over command of the station to Oleg Kononenko. Crews on the International Space Station and on the ground. Uh, dear thousands of humans down there working on this project in the control centers, engineers, planners, technicians, scientists. Expedition 57 is coming to an end and actually to a successful end despite some of the challenges uh, that we had. Uh, in every one of these situations we were able to come together, the international partners, the crews, the control centers, and do what we're really good at uh, as this international cooperation to adapt to challenges, to changes, and uh, all turn situations to the best, to make the best out of it. And that's what we did. And uh, here we are, six humans on the International Space Station, the embassy of humankind out in space, continuing an 18-year uninterrupted human presence on this fantastic laboratory. At the same time, we also were able to complete a great scientific program. I mean, we had about 300 scientific experiments. Uh, we looked at new materials. Uh, we uh, investigated climate change. We observed live cells. We uh, worked in uh, cancer medication to improve uh, treatments against cancer. We uh, improved treatments against Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. We uh, did uh, plasma and quantum physics. And last but not least, we tested uh, new technologies that will enable us to to go further to Moon and Mars. And speaking about Moon and Mars, during this expedition, this half year up here on Space Station, we completed about 3,000 orbits around our planet, covering the distance uh, between Moon and, and Earth 200 times over, forth and back. And uh, in addition to that, we also completed half an orbit around Sun with uh, all of you guys together. Uh, I would like to thank my Soyuz crew, my friends Sergey and Serena, for 
Well, a fantastic time up here, half a year on the International Space Station. Uh, not only you guys worked professionally and with a great attitude to make this expedition successful, but in addition to that, you guys showed such a great like attitude towards living up here on station, um, making this a great display of international cooperation. So thanks for that. Uh, at the same breath, I have to uh, thank all our families uh, because they supported us during these uh, six months up here and in the, all the preparation time before. And without that support, this mission would not have been possible at all. We know that uh, you guys actually have the hardest job of this mission and we will never forget that. Uh, same goes for the mission teams, so all the thousands of people down there who contributed to, to that mission, to, uh, to this fantastic project with what they have as a talent uh, coming together, bringing in their dedication. Without this, this would not be possible at all. The new crew, uh, it's fantastic to see you guys. Uh, you joined Expedition 57 for two and a half weeks and you uh, hit the ground running and you did something that some people said was not possible. You uh, got ready in, uh, in two and a half weeks to take over this fantastic uh, place, this fantastic machine. And if I see you guys, I really have to say you are ready. Oleg, of course, I don't have to say much. You've been here many times before. I think this is your fourth mission. So you're a very <laughs> experienced commander and I know uh, this place will be in very, very good hands, uh, your hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we close that hatch tomorrow, we'll be both happy and sad. We will leave this place with a laughing and a crying eye, um, mostly because we miss you, our friends up here, but also this, this fantastic, magical place. This is the only place that humans have outside of planet Earth where humans can live. And uh, if you like, down there on Earth, you can actually see it with your naked eye. You just go to the ISS website and uh, it tells you when to see us. You can look up in the sky and you will see this bright little star moving over the sky. Uh, you can see that uh, on many, many nights. And uh, if you see it, think about that humans actually built this, that uh, there are right now six humans, soon only three humans up here out of the seven billion humans that live down on Earth. So give these guys a wave when you see them. I will herewith hand over command of the International Space Station to Oleg Dmitrovich Kanyanyenko as the commander of Expedition 58. Congratulations, Oleg. And we ring the bell traditionally, and I will hand over the key to the ISS to Oleg. Oops. Pardon? Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, first of all, thank you for the great handover we have got from you. Uh, thank you for the great job you have done as uh, station commander. Uh, you were thank good uh, keeping station uh, in order and excellent condition. We appreciate you warm. Welcome and uh, sharing your experience with our crew. And uh, it was short handover, but extremely product productive. Serena, thank you for your kindness, your attitude, and creating a harmonious and friendly atmosphere in our crew. Sergey, ну, uh, ты очень компетентен и очень профессионален. Спасибо, мы с тобой дружно и очень профессионально выполнили один из сложных. Выхода в открытый космос. Спасибо тебе за это. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure to work with uh, you. You successful completed all the tasks here on board. It was uh, a bit longer expedition than expected, but right now it's time for you to go back home and meet uh, your families. We wish you Godspeed and soft landing. Expedition 58 and 59 are going to be very busy and we are ready to get to work. Thanks uh, to everyone on the ground. One more thanks 
Алекс Сую, Серина, Сергей. Ну, and uh, I'm ready to assume command of the International Space Station. Thank you very much. Awesome. Houston, this concludes the event. Again, uh, that was the uh, change of command ceremony uh, 24 hours ago in which Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency handed over command of the station to Russian cosmonaut and veteran space station flyer Oleg Kononenko, who is uh, now the Expedition 58 commander. He also will be Expedition 59's commander. Kononenko uh, will uh, begin his uh, commander status officially in earnest at the time of the undocking of the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft that you see there in the middle of your picture that is currently docked to the Rosfiat module, the undocking scheduled about three and a half hours from now. Some of the key times uh, to keep in mind here as we uh, await uh, the anticipated uh, farewells and hatch closure between uh, the two vehicles coming up in about 10 minutes or so from now, the uh, command uh, to open up uh, the hooks on the Soyuz side of the docking interface to the Rosfiat module is scheduled at 7.39 p.m. Central Time, 8.39 p.m. Eastern Time. It takes about 90 seconds for the series of hooks to open. The actual physical separation of MS-09 uh, from uh, the Rosfiat module is scheduled at 7.40 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time. 8.40 uh, and 30 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. The uh, Soyuz then will conduct two uh, separation burns to uh, make its way to a safe distance away from the station. The first would be an eighth second burn of the uh, Soyuz engines, followed uh, a couple of minutes later by a second 15 second burn of the same Soyuz engines. That uh, will uh, enable the Soyuz to drift away uh, to a safe distance away from the station over the period of a couple of orbits. That then sets the stage for the deorbit burn of the Soyuz, a four minute, 36 second braking maneuver that is scheduled at 10, 10, and 52 seconds p.m. Central Time, 11, 10, and 52 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. That is a uh, retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second enabling it to slide out of orbit for its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. Some 27 and a half minutes after the uh, deorbit burn will come the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, that will occur at an altitude of about uh, 87 miles above the Earth at 10.38 and 11 seconds p.m. Central Time, 11.38 and 11 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. The uh, three sections, again, will pyrotechnically separate. Uh, the descent module is the only section uh, that uh, re uh, is retained uh, with the crew on board, of course, with its heat shield pointed in the direction of travel uh, for the uh, rest of the uh, voyage back to Earth for Prokopiev, Gerst, and Onan Chancellor. The uh, three crew members in the descent module will uh, feel the first traces of the Earth's atmosphere and the pull of gravity against their bodies for the first time in six and a half months at 10.41 p.m. Central Time, 11.41 p.m. Eastern Time at the point uh, about 62 miles above the Earth called Entry Interface in which uh, heat around uh, the vehicle will begin uh, to build up to about 25 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the heat shield uh, ablating that heat as uh, the uh, vehicle and the crew enter into the plasma regime for a period of about five and a half minutes or so. G loads or gravity uh, loads against the, their bodies will build up to about four to five Gs. They will emerge from that plasma regime at about 10.47 p.m. Central, 11.47 p.m. Eastern Time. Two minutes after that, uh, if everything goes as planned, the command will be issued to open up uh, the parachutes on the Soyuz vehicle at an altitude of about six and a half miles uh, above the uh, steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, that will occur at 10.49 and 11 seconds p.m. Central Time, 11.49 and 11 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. 
The uh, two pilot parachutes are first deployed, the second of which extracts a drogue chute. The drogue chute then released, <laughs> measuring about 24 square meters, slowing the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 230 meters per second to about 80 meters per second. That uh, will be followed in short order by the uh, deployment of the main parachute that covers an area of 1,000 meters. That slows uh, the Soyuz uh, to a descent rate of about 7.5 meters per second. The harness is first allowing the Soyuz to descend at an angle of 30 degrees to expel heat, then shifts the Soyuz to a straight vertical descent for the remaining few minutes uh, down to touchdown. Landing is scheduled at 11.03 and 21 seconds p.m. Central Time, 12.03 and 21 seconds a.m. Eastern Time, which is uh, just after 11.03 a.m. at the landing site on Thursday. Landing is scheduled at a point about 87 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, where the Russian Search and Recovery Forces and the embedded uh, NASA and European Space Agency personnel are... Uh, Soon uh, to wake up and to make their way to the Jezkazgan airport to board Russian Mi-8 helicopters for the short 30-minute uh, flight down to the landing zone itself. Just to recap, uh, we are just minutes away from uh, the six crew members having an opportunity to say farewell to one another as Prokopiev, uh, Gerst, and Onan Chancellor make their way through the, hatch, through the hatchway uh, between uh, the uh, Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station into the Soyuz MS-09. Prokopiev uh, spent uh, some time, a, a short time ago, activating the Soyuz systems and placing uh, the vehicle on internal power. That uh, sets the stage uh, for all of the other uh, pre-undocking preparations that will take place as the crew conducts leak checks after the hatches are closed. We should be receiving downlink television from the Rosviet module of the uh, departing crew members saying farewell to Ale Kononenko, David St. Jock, and Anne McLean who will be a three-person crew for just under three months together uh, during uh, that period of time until the launch of the next trio of crew members to bring the station back to a steady state number of six. Altai Moscow, space to ground two.
The uh, International Space Station is currently flying 250 miles just uh, off the coast of Malaysia, moving from southwest and northeast across uh, Southeast Asia at the moment. Again, we're standing by uh, for the uh, farewells and the closing of the hatch to the Soyuz MS-09 that uh, will mark the start of a couple of orbits worth of leak checks that will take place by the crew on both sides of the docking interface between the Soyuz and the Rosviet module. You're looking at a view from a camera overlooking the uh, cavernous Russian flight control room. The Russian uh, flight controllers in charge of all of tonight's operations. Here at the Johnson Space Center in the International Space Station flight control room, a shift handover is now complete. The Orbit 3 team of flight controllers on console uh, for the rest of the night's activities. They are led by uh, Flight Director Royce Renfrew, who is uh, the second from the bottom. Uh, he is joined on console at the top of your screen by the spacecraft communicator, Adam Springer, who is uh, in a position to talk to the rest of the station crew during uh, the course of tonight's activities. He will be joined uh, a bit later on by veteran astronaut Shane Kimbrough, uh, who will uh, provide his expertise, if required, about Soyuz systems throughout the course of the undocking and landing operations. Moscow has been run. Moscow? On space and ground, too? Go ahead on space and ground, too. Guys, we can see you. Okay, so should I uh, record the image or what should I do with it? Should there is our view of the uh, departing crew as uh, the cameras are being set up. Uh, Serena Anand Chancellor on the left, Alexander Gerst in the middle, Sergei Prokopiev on the right. For your safe return to the Earth, and uh, we wish you soft and successful landing. Uh, Sergey, you can see the image, correct? Yes, uh, yes, the image is excellent. Moscow. Uh, this is Sergey. So, uh, should I close the hatches? Moscow. Oleg, go ahead and space the ground too. Yes, put everything in work. Okay, so should I, should I close the hatch? Sergey, how do you read me? Okay, I read you loud and clear now. And how us on Space and Ground 2? Okay, uh, so do we close the hatches or not? Yes, correct your goal to close the hatches. MKS to Moscow, Canal SG2. Station Moscow on Space and Ground 2. We are not receiving the image.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we saw the uh, departing crew for a moment. The video then froze uh, in the Rosviet module. Okay. So we're waiting for a resumption of video from the International Space Station as uh, the two uh, three-person crews say goodbye to one another. Uh, Sergey, how, how is the video now? Because the cable was disconnected. No, we uh, still do not have the video. It, the cable was disconnected from the camera, and I reconnected the cable, so you should have the video now. No, we're not uh, getting the video yet. Could you please check the cable connection again to the camera? Okay, I reconnected the cable to the camera. And please uh, power off the camera and power it back on. And what about now? Altai in Moscow. Altai in Moscow. Okay, we are getting the video now. And video back now from the Rosviet module. David St. Jacques of the Canadian Space Agency there in the foreground. Uh, you can see the departing crew, Serena Onan Chancellor. Alexander Gerst and Soyuz Commander Sergei Prokopiev on the other side of the hatch now. They're actually in the habitation module, the upper portion of uh, the Soyuz vehicle. They will make their way through that section into the descent module a short time from now, and a good view of Alexander Gerst. The preparation steps. Stand by. Uh, please execute step 3.2 first. 3.2 is complete. Copy. And with that, your goal to start uh, step 3.3, page 27, transfer hedge closure. Copy. And we will put it in work. Step 3.4. Carefully, careful. A final wave of farewell from the departing crew. The Soyuz hatch now being closed. We'll stand by for the closure of the uh, station hatch. Confirm the hatch closure. Yes, the we confirm the hatches are closed. Turkey, we are closing the ISS hatch. Yes, go ahead. So Moscow, Altai. Moscow, Altai. Altai, Fusion. Yes, Altai, we have you loud and clear. Крышка БО СУ закрыта. ISS SU hatch is closed. 
Принято. Папи? And as you can see uh, from the downlink television, the Soyuz hatch closed at 4.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The first step on the road home for Prokopiev, Gerst, and Onan Chancellor. Again, the Soyuz hatch closed at 4.30 p.m. Central, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The station hatch will be closed a short time from now. Uh, to uh, complete that process. This uh, will then be followed uh, by the crew uh, performing uh, a series of leak checks uh, on both sides of the docking interface before the departing crew begins to don their Sokol launch and entry suits. Station Commander Alec Kononenko now uh, about to close the hatch on the Rosviet module side of the docking interface. Do you mean the book? Once again, uh, the uh, departing crew, Sergei Prokopiev, Alexander Gerst, Serena Onan Chancellor, they are inside the Soyuz MS-09 spacecraft, having closed their hatch at 4.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, to mark the beginning of their final preparations that will lead to the undocking of the uh, Soyuz from the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station just over three hours from now. Have you loud and clear? I'm on page 28. No, I'm not working yet. I'm not working. Uh, I'm not doing anything yet. That's uh, good, Alex. Don't do anything on that page. Okay, copy. And at uh, 4.34 p.m. Central Time, the Rosviet module hatch closed, but uh, the official closing of the hatch to the Soyuz marked at 4.30 p.m. Central, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So with the hatches now closed between the two spacecraft, the station and uh, the Soyuz uh, vehicle, the um, International Space Station is uh, moving from southwest to northeast over the western uh, Pacific Ocean. On this orbit of the Earth, the uh, departing crew of Prokopiev, Gerst, and Onan Chancellor uh, will now uh, begin uh, the process of two orbits worth of leak checks, as will uh, the station crew members, Kononenko, St. Jock, and Anne McLean, to make sure we have an airtight seal in that small vestibule, uh, the small passageway uh, on both sides of the docking interface between the two vehicles uh, before uh, we 
get to the point of undocking that is scheduled just over three hours from now. Everything is proceeding on track for the undocking. The physical separation of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module is scheduled at 7.40 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time, 8.40 and 30 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. The Soyuz will back away from the station to a safe distance for the deorbit burn that is scheduled at 10.10 p.m. Central, 11.10 p.m. Eastern Time, setting up for a landing on the frozen tundra of the steppe of Kazakhstan to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan at 11.03 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 12.03 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 11.03 a.m. Kazakhstan time on December the 20th. S-15, the command has been sent, the LED is not illuminated anymore. So with that, uh, we'll wrap up this broadcast, uh, the first of our three broadcasts throughout the course of the evening for the return of the Expedition 57 crew back to Earth after six and a half months in space. As you look at a view of the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Korolyov on the outskirts of Moscow, we'll uh, be back on the air at 6.45 p.m. Central Time, 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time with our undocking coverage. The undocking again scheduled at 7.40 p.m. Central, 8.40 p.m. Eastern Time. So we'll be uh, rejoining you uh, in about uh, two hours, a little over two hours from now, for the undocking of the Soyuz MS-09 from the International Space Station after a stay of six and a half months. With that, uh, we'll call it a broadcast, and we'll be seeing you in about two hours from now. Have a good evening. This is Mission Control Houston.